This is CS2510, week 3, lecture 2. So today, we're going to look at something, in my opinion, that's very exciting, which is probability and randomness. In other words, we're going to look at what is an example of a Monte Carlo simulation. So the learning objectives, and of course, like it says in your reading, this is section 6.1 and 6.2 from the book, right? Learning objectives, number one, concepts are Monte Carlo. You might have heard of the word Monte Carlo simulation. If you haven't, you have definitely, I'm sure you've heard of the city of Monte Carlo, right? Simulation, and then pseudo, RNG, so RNG stands for random number generation. Then what are the language features we're going to learn today? Rand, bar, scatter. And then a general idea of out of memory and a rule of thumb is a rule of thumb is upper limit for number oops values in array is 1 times 10 to the 6. I mean, it's just a rule of thumb. It depends on a computer. On my tablet, this <laughs> rule of thumb works pretty well. Okay. General notes, none. Okay. So what is Monte Carlo simulation mean? Simply put, uh, Monte Carlo is the paradigm of setting up a random simulation game whose outcome, if you want to call the random simulation game, whose outcome then or score gives information about the problem at hand, okay? In our case, what we're going to do, we are going to approximate pi. Why am I writing, why am I writing pi like in MATLAB? Too much MATLAB. Pi by a simulation, by a random simulation of a dart game whose score um, will approximate Pi, whose score is four times the number of hits. Uh, let me think. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, divided by number of throws. So, what are the hits and the number of throws mean? So, here's the game, right? So, here's the dot game. So basically what we have is 0x, y. So this is x is minus 1, 0. Actually, let's do this. 
No, that's fine. Zero, negative one. So let's consider. Let me use a different, different colors, because these are the colors I'm going to be using in the plot command. So let's consider a square within which we have an inscribed circle of radius one. circle this is when I wish I had my compass mm, not too bad. okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna randomly okay that's not good so anyway hopefully we can save at the end but it, let me just um, Go through this. So we're going to throw darts, and we're going to look at the probability that a dart lands within or on the circle, and this probability is equal to number of hits divided by number of throws okay but then we're going to confine ourselves to this area and this is equal to within the circle Therefore, but, but the area of the circle is pi r squared. Okay, in this case, r is 1. And area of the square, which is our full, you could say, board, is length squared. Therefore, 1 implies pi r, pi r squared divided by 2r squared is exactly equal to hits divided by number of throws. In other words, uh, let's see. So I will do this as approximately. And the approximation comes because if number of throws is infinity, I mean, obviously, as this keeps getting larger and larger, this becomes more and more, this becomes, tends towards equality. In other words, this is what we get is pi, therefore, is approximately four times hits divided by number of throws. And this is exactly what we're going to implement in MATLAB. So let's get started. Let's call this script. Oh, come on. So let me save this. We call this random generation. Oh, no, let's not call it random. Monte Carlo Pi. That sounds cooler. Okay. Script for estimation of Pi using Monte Carlo. And the game we're going to play is we randomly sample a point on or inside a circle, a unit circle, okay? And I don't want to update right now. All that is inscribed within a square whose side has length two, probability of obtaining a point within the circle is pi times r squared divided by 2 times 
r squared this implies that pi is approximately four times if it hits uh, is approximately divided by sample space okay, divided by n let's just call it n and hopefully you're doing your reading so you'll know what this is talking about if you don't well this what i mean by this script does not set the random number seed so if you don't understand what the random number seed is well do your reading okay okay let's start with the number of points is 100 okay. now what we need to do is we need to use the rand command to generate a random interval for both x and y so the random interval of interest for us is going to be between minus 1 and 1 on x and minus 1 and 1 on y so to do this let's look at the rand command rand and if you have done the reading random generates a uniform uh, random number in the interval 0 1 so let's say r is rand of 10 1 so there it is so what do you mean by uniform so let's do it is by uniform your okay, if it's ideal random number generation you will have an equally like an equal chance of getting any number any real number in the interval 0 comma 1 of course this is the whole idea behind pseudo random number generation our computer is a quantized and sampled finite state machine so we can't really get a uh, perfect uniform distribution but we can get pretty close so let's see how close can we get so what we're going to do is we're going to so first of all to generate the to go between minus one and one what we're going to do is we're going to say x is rand let's generate n points okay so let's stick n 100 first but we're going to scale it by two right so you'll go now from zero to two but then we're going to subtract one from that so again this is interval arithmetic if you're not familiar with this please <laughs> do your reading again okay, same thing for y so now what we're going to do though is we're going to look at this distribution so uh, just we're only going to look at how uniform the random number generation is that is how, how it becomes uniform as you increase n there are other statistics such as mean and standard deviation which are again part of your reading okay. so uh, uh, look at uh, distribution of random numbers so what we're going to do is we're going to basically say it's between minus 1 and 1 so let's scale this to between minus 10 and 10 and then take the integer part of that and then implement a count variable so what we're going to do is we're going to say our um, bins if you will are 10 times x okay so we're only going to do random numbers on the x-axis and then we're going to say 4k equals 1 to n right and so let's see how do we do this so let's implement a count variable which is zero so and then let's extract an integer uh, let's see ceiling of bins of k and then what we can do is we can based on now so j is an integer so we can now however it will be between minus 10 and 10 so let's add 11 okay uh, count of j equals count of j plus 1 and then if we do a bar graph of this count and magenta okay then let's see and uh, technically what we have is uh, our distribution is between minus 1 and 1 with 20 points okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this please go through your assigned reading if you don't understand this and add comments so you 
understand this. Okay, so let's check. Oh, this is bar semicolon because I don't want to echo that title. And again, spell distribution, distribution of random numbers in uniform bins over the interval negative one one. I'm not going to use a tech interpreter. Okay, so hopefully this works. I mean, if it doesn't work, it's fine. We'll debug it. So it's going back in here. Uh, let's do Monte Carlo. Pi, unable to access index out of bounds because number of elements in count is one. Why is that? Let's see. Uh, count. Oh, sorry. So this should be zeros. One, okay, so there. That should do that because count is an array. Uh, count equals 20. Ah, the dreaded off by one error. Okay. Since I'm using the ceiling function, 10 should do here. That's good at making these errors. So there's the, it's not very uniform, but remember, so let me just clear all, close all. I'm not using a lot of bins, right? This, sorry, I'm not using a lot of points. I'm only using 100 points. So let's make this uh, a thousand. Uh, let's make this a 10,000, like they do it in the they do in the book. Uh, let's run this again. So there it is. Okay, it's becoming ideally they should all be the same height. That's good. Okay, so now let's do figure. Plot square and approximate plot square hits and approximate pi. Since I have only two and a half more minutes, I'm just gonna quickly go through this. The necessary um, code has a. It's also we have discussed this a lot. Right? We discussed this in the last lecture. What this means, the empty matrix. It's also in your reading, so please go through it. 4k going from 1 to n. So if you take our x value, square it, take our y value, square it, add them, so that's not equal to 1, that means we're inside the circle, right? So we, we got a hit. And then hit x is we take, we add our coordinates for plotting, that we concatenate the coordinates for plotting. Again, you should try to do this without loops. Good exercise, right? And then, so our hit um, points is let's call this hit points or hit x and hit y. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create the square. We're on square backboard in red. Okay. So the square is going to be we're going to go negative 1, 1 to 1, negative 1, to 1, 1, to negative 1, 1, back to negative 1, 1, okay? Then we're going to plot, uh, so we have a new figure on line 22 that we created, so it's good, plot square. I, let's do this, let's move this figure. Oops, that's wrong. Okay. Uh, let's hold the plot, right? And then now we're going to use a scatter plot. This is one of the points. Uh, hit one, no, no, hit points. That's what I called it. Uh, hit points. All row second column. Let's do a radius of one. In blue, and you should look at the help for scatter. And finally, we're going to say f print of pi is approximately uh, percent f. 
So it's approximately four times hits divided by N, and that's equal to percent F. Okay. So four times hits divided by N is equal to four times hits divided by N. That's about it. I think I'm running, I'm out of time actually. I'm over 20 minutes. So let me just check. Yeah, but not that much over. So hopefully there are no errors. So let's see. Close all, clear all. Let's do Monte Carlo Pi. Okay, that's good. It's not crashing yet. Oh, beautiful. So there it is. Okay. So you can see that with my 10,000 points, actually the other aspect ratio was better here. We do get a circle and pi is, well, three, it's not that great, but you get the idea. Right? This is actually pretty cool. So that's about it for today's lecture. Uh, please continue to do your reading and practicing with MATLAB. All right, see you next lecture.